just in time. I can't say enough in praise of our military, Army Rangers and paratroopers, Navy, Marine, and Air Force personnel, those who planned a brilliant campaign and those who carried it out. Almost instantly, our military seized the two airports, secured the campus where most of our students were, and are now in the mopping up phase. I'm from Grenada. I said, holy shit. I, and I, I said, well, let me show you something. And I, I, I rolled up my sleeve and I showed him a tattoo. Of, oh, yeah, there we go. Of Grenada. So this is the island of Grenada right here, right? So U.S. paratrooper, Grenada 83 with the, you know, the skull and the beret. And I said, you recognize that? And she looks at it she goes, there should be a Coke bottle in that because we drank all the Coke <laughs> on that island. So anyway, yeah, so she's a, she, was, she was there. She was seven years old when we invaded Grenada, seven years old. And she remembers uh, certain things about the actual uh, you know, operation. She said that her uncle was on the bad side of the operation. Okay, so you're on that side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, small world that, uh, That's right. You know, I'm gonna see if I can see anything else, if anything else comes up easily. But what I was gonna share with you, when you recount these stories, that's probably somebody in a company right there. Probably. Too hard to tell, though. Well, you got a dragon there. Yeah, because we don't have the, the stuff on our helmets. No, no. Definitely have a dragon. That's an iconic picture right there. Yep. Uh, one of the uh, things that I was recalling about walking down that damn runway, when you said you had two five-gallon cans, I remember these guys. I remember seeing Bikes? this dude on the bike. Yeah. The Ranger the Rangers, clearing, right. the runway clearing team? Yep. Or combat controllers. Don't know which one of those two. But I remember seeing those guys. Uh, I'll fish through a little more and see if we can find something. Uh, Sergeant Robinson yep. looks at me and looks at... Uh, um, Pierce and goes, count these fucking grenades. So we got a box with the box, right? We got a box yeah. of grenades. We're Freaking towing. We got our backpacks and we're walking like hunchback and Notre Dame. That's what took us. That's why it took us like an hour to get down the runway because we're like, fucking shit, no, like, you know. And he's back there yelling at us. I felt like we were in Monty Python. You know that? No, excuse me, Benny Hill. Remember that little old guy yeah. that Benny used to kick yeah. in the ass? I felt like. We were the little old guy that Sergeant Robinson was kicking his way. Get down here with them grenades, boy. Keep going. Keep going. Why are you slowing down? And he was right behind us the whole fucking time, you know? Yeah. I think he had like, like a... He, he was a character, but I liked him. He was an interesting yeah. guy. Yeah, I liked him a lot. Yeah. You know Malvo? Huh? Um, Malvo was... No. I'm getting... See... Malvo was one of my squad leaders. Okay. But I don't know if he went to Grenada. He might have. Ah. Uh, he was kind of like a dark-skinned yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. but had a French last was he, name. Was he in Grenada, though? Malvo? Was he what? Was he in Grenada with us? I don't remember. Because I remember Malvo, no, for me, don't forget, I got back from Grenada, and then, you know, a month later, I'm freaking on PCS leave in, in the German two years. And you're in Germany, and came, enjoying some beer. Right, some beer, right, right. And, and so, going to Germany, right after Grenada, you know, PFC, where the CIB and Oh was. yeah! My God, do you think? I mean, there was some, there was some stairs. There were dudes in the hallways like getting out of your way. There was some stairs from Vietnam veterans. You know, what oh the yeah! Fuck? What? 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 Yeah. The fuck? Why would that? We're real veterans. Why do you have that yeah. CIB? Right. 
But come on, I mean, technically, we got shot at, some of us shot Brown's back, we did combat patrol, some, you know, some guys in other units got wounded and some of them got of killed. I mean, come on. It's, everything's relative to how you compare it to something else. Exactly. But fuck, what are you going to do? Say, no, I don't want to wear my CIB? Right. You'd yeah. probably get in trouble anyway if you didn't wear the goddamn thing. No, you, if, if, you're, if you're awarded it, you'll have to wear it. Okay. No. Only, only, only well, thing I you... put it on everything. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, track that. So. I have a sticker on my car, you know. Right. Track it. But so, Sergeant Robin in that, then we had that one instance where we set up that gun. Was that the only time you put the scope on it? No, I'm sure we had a few other times a night, but yeah. that's the one thing that sticks in my, yeah. my mind. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then we stuck in that cane field, and then Burgess was like, ah, see all those lights? That's the enemy! Fucker. And, and then, um, and Burgess was always getting hammered by his sergeant. And always. you guys, you guys, and I think it was Burgess, asked me to dig a fucking fighting position and something that was no less like the hardest ass, dried ass soil. I you could, I barely you scratched. You all night long and get that deep. I, that was it. I was like, fuck, <laughs> you fucking gotta be kidding me, man. Uh, and then um, <laughs> Ross Point Inn, and I have a funny story about Ross Point Inn. Sergeant Grimes, are you out there? Wait a minute, <laughs> let me see where is, if this thing's still filming. I gotta keep hitting it. Uh, where's that little red record button? Oh, that one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Sergeant Grimes. So, the, the, from what I remember, the Ross Point it had a nice little green lawn, and yeah. then there was literally like maybe some rocks and then the ocean. Yes. Beautiful. Was, Palm it, trees. It dropped down. Yep. The ocean. It was, it was a, uh, yep. um, a, um, a deck. Okay. Small deck now. Well, okay, yeah. that's what Dora Marines was saying. And then there were like little huts somewhere. And there were like little huts. Uh, but what was great for us was we got to sleep on the lawn. That was like ooh, luxury instead of under a shack in a cane field or, or on the runway. A nice grassy lawn was like sleeping on a bed for us. Uh, Except for the long, the long crabs. Oh God, I remember those. I remember those. We I had our little woobies. I never had one on me, but I recall <laughs> many soldiers jumping up all of a sudden and then, what the fuck? Uh, What's on me? You know, it's a lint crab. Fuck, I'm so glad I didn't get that. <laughs> but I remember one morning, one <laughs> afternoon, we hear somebody going, hey! Hey guys, what's up? Hey! And it's... He's holding on with one hand, he's waving, it's fucking Sergeant Grimes in his green boxers, and he's fucking water skiing by us. Ah! How, did get, how did he get to the boat? He made friends, he was networking, I don't know, but yeah, I'd never heard Sergeant Robinson yell so loud at somebody, he got his ass chewed out so bad, Right. but yeah. fuck it, he and didn't get in trouble, I mean, he didn't get a stripe taken away, he just and, got and, chewed and, out. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what I was saying. No, had, had no reason to chew anybody out after uh, I witnessed he and Sergeant Smiley walking back in. Fucked up and hammered. Fucked up and hammered from the town. When wow. I, well, yeah. they stopped yeah. Pierce and I from going into town and getting hammered. Yeah. That was it was Lieutenant McCoy, though. Remember Lieutenant McCoy? Um, the name only. Black guy. Super nice. Lieutenant McCoy. Really nice guy. He was our LT down in Grenada. He was so soft spoken, you didn't even know he was around. Yeah. He walked right in mm -hmm. on us, uh, Sergeant, oh, and a, a little, a little, a little circle of us. After we pull guard duty, sometimes we go back in, behind one of these houses and hang out. <laughs> had bought one of uh, what the, the Grenadians called a spliff. It was a, a, a joint about that long, cost one buck. Seriously. And we were back there lighting up, and he just walked up, and he goes, "Hey, by the way, blah 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 blah." And he walked away. We were like, "Cause this was before the all piss tests." So yeah, like, oh, we yeah. were like, "Wow, okay, he's cool. He didn't as long as he did our jobs, yeah. as long as he did that, he wasn't gonna micromanage us." Uh, so that's what I remember. You remember Manning getting the urchin in his foot? Yes. And Doc gave him some morphine. As well, the and, morphine and, I don't remember, but I remember yeah. rum. He was swinging yeah, his rum, or some some shit. rum. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was not a happy camper. No, no, but those oh, he no. had probably you know five, six spines. There's a photo of Doc as well. 
searching people. Right. Have you seen that online? No. He had that. He had a mustache, didn't he? Yeah, Doc Spatz. Yeah, Doc Spatz's mustache. Yes. And he was on the Grenada thing for a while, and then he was gone. There's a photo right. of him. Really? Yeah. Man, I really wish I would have set up more time. There's the BDRMs. What yeah. do you call these BDRs, yeah. BDRMs? Uh, BMPs. BMPs. Yep. Yeah. We walked by those. Uh, yeah, that's what I remember, right there, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And off, there were, there were you know, dead cattle as well nearby. They got fucked up. They had a more, they had, apparently they had like 12 of them on that island. And at one point they opened up on their own citizens. Let's see. So what you can do, I think what you can do is uh, go Urgent Fury Archives, and then you can see all the uh, official um, army or U.S. government shots. They must have had some privateers down there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when you see Bogdanovich, I think he's the one that must have been following us around. I don't remember. Wow. You remember um, uh, McSweeney? Seen him. You remember McSweeney? Sure. Yeah. So he um, he ended up he wasn't with us. He actually stayed at the battalion level. He was doing something S three A or S three whatever. But he was he wasn't with us. He was uh, back at the headshed uh, at the airfield. So he didn't. Oh, okay. He didn't come with us. So he was in Grenada, but he didn't trap around. No. Around with us. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, and who was his buddy there? Um, um, Is that Sean Street? Those are Rangers, okay. Yeah. This is apparently uh, second platoon. That, that and looks that's like Paul Tay. Yeah, this, this is actually or reminds me of the house that we found the pistol at. Or or um, David Walters. This might be David Walters. He says that's him. That could be that's yeah. Dragon. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. I mean we didn't know we were being photographed. No, not at all. There was guys filming down there. Apparently, this is what a second platoon leader is right here. Yeah. Shit, man. Where the hell is all? Where, where the hell are they? All these photos. I have a collection of them on my desktop. This goes to show you how well prepared I was for this interview, right? <laughs> totally well prepared. I spent like so much time with the lighting. Uh, Doc Spatz, there's one of him, there's one of Blanc. Well, anyway, uh, they're there, and I'll find them and I'll post them up later. Yeah. Uh, and I can do that digitally in the format of this interview. Um, and a lot of those are not going to A lot of those are not, you yeah, know, what that, what, what, you know. This is how it works. Well, one thing that just throw a bunch of stuff at you. But that means that if Bogdanovich was down there, there's only four images that we know of. There's probably 40 that he took, or 50, or 400. Could be. And why only those are the ones that we that are released is interesting. Did he lose the film? But then if you lose the film, why would you have that one? Because how can you lose the rest of that role? So there's so much shit out there. Anyway. Back in the day, all we had was 110, was 110 disposable cameras. We always had it in our freaking ammo pouches, right? You know, uh, 24 4 got tape. Shag from 1st Platoon took a lot of did he? images. All did? Now, I don't know. I know there's some of him down there, so I don't know if he bought his own camera, which I'm assuming he did. Uh, I had 11 magazines on me. I wasn't going to bring a fucking camera down there. Well, I mean... No, no. Anywhere you can put a magazine, you put a magazine, right. you know? Exactly. Yeah. You carry what we're given. So, and once again, we know, we were brand new to the Army, literally, yeah. within the year, right? Because I, I went to base training in September, and in October, we're, you know, in Grenada. Oh, you got out in September? I, I reported the basic training in September of 82. Oh, so you were in, like, one year. Okay. Yeah, just about a year, right? Yep, yeah. yep. And I was in, like, six months. Yeah, and you're still, oh, so you were so into it. I mean, obviously, you're still acclimating that, at that age in the time frame. You're like, oh, you know. Wow, and suddenly we're you know, going to Grenada. Yeah, and it's interesting that we came back on Veterans Day, November 11th. We did. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Okay, November so 11th. we do our 
a couple of movements, there's a little bit of contact. We're at the Ross Point Inn. Mm -hmm. You asked me over the phone one time, what did I remember at Ross Point? And I remember uh, that you brought up the incident where Manning had the seizures, mm -hmm. the stems pulled out of his foot. Another time, I was on guard with one of those little shacks and I was kind of like nodding off. And apparently, uh, Jim Hunter comes up from behind me and goes, ah, you're dead. I don't know, I guess he like had, I don't know what he did, like he was pretending to stab me, but he was doing me a favor, trying to keep me awake right. and be aware, you know, um, and the fact that we could shower there, but you didn't remember. Yeah, I can't recall the showering, I know we yeah. did, but I just, I just can't remember that. I do recall um, where we had the M6 set up, there was a building off to the right, they had a phone, and I recall going in there and calling back to the States to collect, to let my parents know, Hey, we're good. Here we are. And um, my mother put together a photo album um, of when they came down for a jump school graduation. And uh, my trip to brag in process. And at the very back of the photo album is a calendar that she had marked. Uh, Major Grenada and Dave called home that day. Oh, okay. So I had that, that memory in a photo album. This is really kind of cool. Nice. So, let me check this camera again, because the camera is on your face, and we definitely don't want... Oh, it's still recording. Good. Yeah. Um, Jesus, did we just cover the whole thing already? <laughs> uh, I, well, one thing, one thing I, want to, I just want to talk about quickly is that, so, we got my dog tags here. Yeah. And, um, so, my original dog tags... Um, Those are the ones from that you had back then? These are my ones. These are the original ones, I believe. No shit. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so... Yeah, my name, my social, my blood type, uh, my, my my faith, and on the very bottom says paratrooper, right? But what I wanted to say was that so this round one it had that on there. Yeah, I, I had put it on there. Oh, okay. So nice. So this 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 one right here, this is my grandfather's World War One dog tag. He wore in the trenches of France. Wow. Right. So that dog so tag. Sergeant Louis Louis J. Iot. J. Iot. Right. So that dog tag went through... Colonel? C-O-L? Um, uh, company L. Okay, Company L. Yeah, Company L. Yeah. So that dog tag went through Jesus. World War One. It's that old? It's yeah. pure... Uh, it's uh, like aluminum. It's very light. Yeah, and it's completely... doesn't age. Nope. Nope. Wow. And infantry. Infantry, right? Infantry, yep. so he went, yeah. So this dog tag went through uh, World War One, Grenada. Wow. I wore, I wore it in Afghanistan in 12 and 13. And that's, okay. that's, that's, that's it, because my kids aren't going into the service. So, so Grenada, Afghanistan, and? Grenada. World War I, Grenada. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. And the thing about my grandfather is that, you know, I, I joined the Army and went in, and I didn't really realize that he was a World War I veteran. Because also, you know, you didn't talk about it. In his, his age group, you know, they just didn't talk about it. Uh, he, he also, um, I have all his records and his photographs and, and what he did when he was there. Um, but I never had the opportunity to talk to him about it. Yeah. He passed away. He literally passed away my first year in the Army. So, wow. yeah. So, it's good. We're going on a total tangent here. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. Not you. Let me, if you, if we're going to do, what, real quick, real quick, we'll go down the rabbit hole okay. together. I'm going to, I'm going to reload. What's that? I'm going to reload the beer. Okay, he's going to reload. Yeah. Reload! Where are those damn photos when you want them? Okay, let me see. Urgent Fury Archives. Let me see. Sergeant... Bogdanowitz. You know, trying to spell a Polish last name is like a nightmare. He took a lot of photos of the uh, the Rangers, it looks like, and Colonel Scott. Oh, Our Colonel was kind of a badass. The brigade commander? Yeah. yeah. Scott, yeah. And I think I may have some photos. I may have some um, Yeah, he... Um, that's all I'm coming. 
Search instead for Bodanowitz. Is it Bodanowitz? Two Ds? No. It's got a G in it. And that's not everything. That is not the whole collection. There's one of uh, Shaw reading a book. There's one of Harris. Uh, there's one of Spatz searching somebody. There's a one of Ed. This could be us trying to get the hell off. That could be. With these big ass. And as a matter of fact, um, these big ass backpacks. He, what's his name? So, uh, hey, a shout out to um, Kelly, Patrick uh, O'Kelly, who mentioned, and this, this is going on his website too, that in Grenada, we had some of the heaviest backpacks in the history of the Army. Fuck it. Here's it. <laughs> Cheers. The heaviest backpacks. Cheers. The heaviest backpacks. You should give us like a little, like, it's like a combat backpack patch. Heaviest backpack. 100 well, pounds. Well, like I said before, pounds. I remember the uh, strapping, the webbing tearing um, from the constant, you know, taking off, putting on, taking off, putting on. Because they were extremely heavy. Our frames were starting to bend, too. They were yeah. uh, from the constant having to lift it up. Yeah. And Kelly describes an instance where he's trying to get up. And he had to, if he got down, he would get he would get down near a tree so he could use the tree and stand back up again. And I don't know if this is us or if it's going to give me a, but look at the size of those things. Look at the size of those. Yeah. They're fucking loaded down. Yeah. And of course, what you're not seeing is the, uh, the flak vest we were wearing as well. Remember those? Well, yeah, I remember yeah. because... The, the only advantage of the flak vest was if you were really tired and you sat down the right way, it kind of held you it up. Held your neck up. Yeah. yeah. You could be like, oh, yeah, I got I got a built-in seat. Oh, but so we were going down the rabbit hole. Check out my great-grandfather. No kidding. Pull that frame. Right there. Great-grandfather fought for the German Kaiser Wilhelm in World War I. So there's, a, there's not a very... There's not an... There's not a small chance, there's a, a chance that they, you were my grandfather, my grandfather were on, great grand, wait, your grandfather. My grandfather. But my great grandfather. How does that work? We're on opposing sides. Um, that's my great grandfather. I just realized there was a light that I should have turned off, but I didn't turn it on. It'll add a little bit more to the background. Yeah. One thing, I, one thing I can say about my time, at least in the 82nd, being my first unit, was definitely shaped my my entire Army career and how I went about, you know, my, my career progression. Yeah. And I uh, always fell back upon, you know, that uh, experience with the 82nd. And, of course, came back after Germany to the 82nd for my last... Uh, last eight months, because I, I didn't stay in the active component. I know I didn't want to do 20 years active duty, but I didn't want to give it up either, so I, I joined the reserves, the infantry reserves at the time. Yep. And uh, so, you know, obviously the, our, you know, operation down there was, uh, you know, had an impression on myself and, and how I conducted myself. And it was a good way to get your feet wet. Yeah, yeah, sure was. Yep. And I wore, and I wore my patch, my a second patch the entire time, you yep. know, I, even though I had other ones to wear, but I wasn't with basic. Yeah, and I, I retrieved a, a beret. Um, uh, that's not my original beret. That's something I got online. So I actually found it at a at a, uh, at a place in Haverhill. At a, at a, at a, uh, a new store. A new store, and then you could see a red flash behind it, and I just glued on the five hundred eight crest or flash yeah. or whatever over. You could just see a little bit of red back there. Uh, but by the way, so. Um, this is a photocopy of an original. Now, the original photo went you, back to that's my great grandpa, right? Yeah, the original, the original of this I had in my hand, which was fascinating because up on the top, uh, it says, "I am with the, uh, I am with the unit that calls itself, and I am proud to be of the 151st." So it's the Prussian Infantry. Okay. Uh, uh, König and Reich, King and country. Um, God is with us, and this is to remember my 
um, duty uh, spot in Allenstein, zero Prussian. So I think the zero is what throws me off. Why would you name a unit zero, but it's a zero slash Prussian, hmm. Allenstein, which I think is a town somewhere. And they got spiffed up for these photos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what he is, a corporal, a private, I don't know what, what, what he is. Quite a that he can't see yeah. And he's got a belt in it on as well. Because you only see. Well, and then that. It's like a sword. Is a riding crop or a sword? That's a sword. A little baby sword. Yeah. So I'd like to know more about this character. I've done a little research and I can't find much about him. My sister sent the actual. It had a sleeve. It was like in a portfolio. I sent it to one of my uncles who has like family archives and research and stuff. He's got the original, which is fascinating because, you know. It's in perfect shape, um, and that's what I got. The little El Chico. <laughs> I, I wish I had. The I wish I had more photographs of our time, you know, in the second. Yeah. At that time frame, but I don't. Just ones you've seen. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have a few when I came back in the '86, but um, but as far as '83 to '84, it's, it's sparse. I took. I finally got a Canon Snappy 50 from my stepmom, which fit right in my ammo pouch, along with three magazines. The only time I ever took that was on maneuvers. I didn't, you know, I didn't take it to a grenade, I didn't have it. I would have taken it, I would not have taken it anyway to grenade. But it always fit in there, and I felt like I was always doing something illegal to have a camera <laughs> in my ammo pouch. Right. But it was perfect. It, it was literally the exact same size and shape of a 20-round yeah. mag. Uh, and I took a lot of stuff in Sinai, um, lost it all in my storage tobacco. But I do, who else took a lot of photos? Uh, some of the LTs um, took some photos. We got some good collections. Feral, but you weren't with us anymore. You were already gone. Yeah, yeah. so a lot, of photos, a lot of photos I see on the websites are after I left. Yep. You know, so so we, do, we did that to piss you off. Yep, well, apparently so. So it worked. Tag's got some stuff. He might have you in some yeah. of it, but Tag was shooting away. Was he really? He bought his little 110 down to rock. Uh, yeah, yeah. My first, um, yeah. Uh, you went with us at the time, but my first uh, jump with the A second was into Fort Carson in March or April of uh, 80, 83. 83? Yeah. My first, uh, my cherry jump. Yeah. And Bruce Vincent. Remember Bruce now? That name sounds familiar. So yeah, so he was with us as well, and uh, he retired out of, out of the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. So we're, we're friends on Facebook as well. So he um, he injured himself uh, on that jump. Okay. Because it was a uh, it, was my, it was my cherry jump, and uh, I almost I almost came in with my rucksack because I couldn't I couldn't find the second quick release under my reserve. So I'm, I'm you know fumbling around, but found it, I dropped it, it, it it fell and popped, and then we hit the ground. It was that it was that close? Yes. But Bruce, he hurt himself from the drop zone, and um, uh, he contacted me for a bud letter for the VA, which he, uh, he was successful in getting some compensation for. But he, uh, so was he in the platoon when I was there? Yeah. yeah. What happened? What did, what did he wind up doing to himself? He broke bones? Uh, no, he he, uh, he sprained his ankle or, or his knee or something. Okay. His back when he, when he landed in Colorado in, in, uh, right. in March or April of uh, 2003. Yeah. We were going to NTC out there. So I have a picture of the platoon. On uh, NTC, on all of us. Oh. Maybe, maybe you saw that. If you go on one of the websites, I posted on there. Um, but I'll on Facebook? You. Yeah. Okay. On Facebook. But I'll, I'll send it to you so you have it anyway. Um, so that's one of the one photo I do have out of the platoon at NTC. It, it, it shows Robinson and so Smiley and you know, all the, the entire crew there. Uh, Where did Smiley you come from? Because right before we went to Grenada, he was not the platoon sergeant, and then all of a sudden, right before, and then the, like the, so, the so day so of. Smiley? He came back from somewhere. No, I recall he was always there. I recall. And what thing was uh, Sean Smiley that was really kind of interesting? Was he gone right before Winter Winter? Was he like gone somewhere? Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know, we because um, Sergeant Robinson was between was, Sergeant when I got there. So Smiley must have been gone on, on a week for a week doing something. Maybe he was going through jump master school or something. Like that, that could be. But interesting about Sergeant Smiley is that he never wore his he never wore his CIB. Or um, um, his master blaster wings. I, I recall it, but I recall he, he never wore a CIB. I saw him. You see, I'd be from Vietnam. Or yeah, be from Vietnam. Okay. Yeah, I never wore that. That I recall anyway. 
Yeah, that was the VHL saw, was nothing. I saw the class A's and it was decked out. And I recall one. You remember, you remember walking? Um, if you walk to, you leave the, the company A, go to the right across. There's a field right beside, right beside the entire battalion was a PT field. Remember that? You dirt, mean the dirt. you mean the, the dirt shit? The dirt, dirt shit. The, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So and we always wanted an angle. We're going somewhere. Either a TMC or maybe there's a shop at down there or whatnot. But um, I always hated walking. Walking that because you always walk past the first one, you know, and you know, as E two, E three, you see a first one. Dennis, are you smoking cigars down there? Yeah. 